Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. MTG Box Analysis here to look at box number three of the Lost Caverns of Ixalan. Let's go ahead and crack open this collector booster box. Does come from a different case, just kind of want to point that out. So I guess we have an equal chance of finding something good. Uh, looking for any of the chase cards, whether that be neon ink or the emblems, but there's still a ton of value in this set, even if we don't hit those. Uh, even a little bit of value potentially in our box topper. So let's just go ahead and crack open our 12 packs here, plus our topper, enjoy the ride, and see what kind of value we can find. And stay tuned in the end as I'll be doing the full MTG box analysis on this particular box. Uh, and I think it's probably time that we do some sort of a comparison be between the three boxes. All right, so this one starts off with an out of air, followed by an armored kin, kin collar. Then we're gonna see a deconstruction hammer, followed by a tinker's tote. And then we're gonna see a contested game ball, followed by an earthshaker dreadmaw. Then we've got a belligerent yearling, followed by one of the brand new islands. And then we're gonna see Nikital current conductor coming in as a showcase with a Cosmium confluence coming in as our first main set rare. Then we're gonna see the belligerent coming in in borderless, followed by a bronze beak forgers coming in from the commander subset. And then we're gonna see ourselves a bone horde dracosaur coming in uh, as a mythic uh, borderless card there. Then we've got ourselves a Jurassic swamp, followed by a restless prairie coming in from the land cycle in foil, followed by a map token with a fungus on the backside. All right, pack number one in the bag. Seems like it was an okay pack. I don't think there were any big home runs in there. So let's move on to pack number two and see if we can find some value. So we got ourselves a Child of the Volcano, followed by an Attentive Sunscribe, a Deathcap Marionette with a Fungal Fortitude. Then we're gonna see the Vanguard of the Rose with a Synapse Necromage, followed by Twists and Turns with the Swamp. And then we're gonna see ourselves Cutzel Malmet Exemplar in Showcase with a squirming emergence as our main set rare, followed by the Enigma Jewel coming in. Very nice to see that. Mythic. And then we're going to see Francisco Foul Marauder coming in from Commander with a Restless Wreath. And then we're going to see ourselves another Jurassic Land. We got the Mountain this time, followed by uh, Anim Pakal Thousand Moon coming in as our rare. And then we're going to see ourselves a Treasure and a Gnome Soldier token. So let's just do uh, do this super quick. Let me just separate out the mythics. All right, so now we've got uh, two mythics so far. Two packs, two mythics. I think that's okay. I think uh, the most I capped out was, I think, 11 in one of these boxes with from a mythic perspective, which is pretty good. So we got a, a mythetic draught followed by another chance. Then we're gonna see ourselves the Cogwork Wrestler, followed by a Promising Vein, Self Reflection. Then we're gonna see a Soul Coil Viper, followed by a Guardian of the Great Door with the Mountain. Behind that, we're gonna see a Rampaging Ceratops coming in as an Uncommon with a Subterranean Schooner. Then we're gonna see a Cosmium Confluence again, this time in Borderless, followed by an Ore Rich Stalactite from Commander, followed by a Cavern of Souls. Very nice, we picked up one of these previously. Awesome, just number 345, not Neon or anything like that. And then we're gonna see Ian Malcolm uh, Chaotician coming in from the Jurassic Park subset with the symbol a little bit off there. And then we're gonna see a Subterranean Schooner coming in in Foil Borderless with a copy and a Dinosaur. All right, so just got the number one hit, aside from the chase cards, from the main set. Now let's get it in uh, neon ink. So we got a Natalie's Favor, followed by a Malmet Veteran. Then we're going to see a River Herald Stout, ice, Inverted Iceberg, Thrashing Brontodon, Dusk Rose Reliquy with a Trumpeting Chomp, excuse me, a Triumphant Chomp, then we're going to get ourselves a forest, followed by Del Prezito. And then we're going to see Sovereign of Onaki Ahu coming in as a mythic from the main set. So that's our first standard frame mythic. And then we're going to see a Queen's Bay Paladin coming in as a, a extended art rare. Then we're going to see a tributary instructor. 
followed by Malcolm in a showcase with a permission denied coming in in foil from the Jurassic Park subset. And then we're going to see a sanguine evangelist in extended art with a fungal uh, dinosaur and a regular dinosaur on the back. I was checking to see if that uh, permission denied had uh, the emblem. It does not. Uh, last time I checked, that was the least valuable emblem card out there. But you know what? I would take any emblem card. All right, so we got ourselves a Blood Rage Mycoid, followed by Dinomation. Then we get Mineshaft Spider. Oh, skip the Water Wind Scout with the Water Log Hulk. Then we're going to see the Hoverstone Pilgrim with a glimpse from the core. Then we've got ourselves the Plains, followed by a Sith Claw Raptor. And then we're going to see Amalia Benavides Aguire coming in as our main set rare, followed by a Terrarian's Journal in Extended Art with a broadside bombardiers from Commander, and then we're going to see the Hulking Raptor in Borderless with a Jurassic Swamp. And I'll go ahead and flip that one for you, because that one's kind of fun to look at. And then we're going to see ourselves a Braided Net uh, with a Gnome and a Vampire Demon token. All right, rolling in the pack number six here. All right, so we're going to see a Panicked Altalosaur, followed by a Hunter's Blowgun. Then we got ourselves some Dead Weight, followed by a Poison Dart Frog with a Chupacabra Echo. Then we're going to see Eaten by Piranhas, followed by uh, the Great Mistake. Then we're going to see ourselves that island with an Earthshaker Dreadmaw, followed by Alcatraz Deepest Betrayal, another mythic from the main set coming in. Then we're going to see ourselves a Poetic Ingenuity coming in Extended Art Foil with an Order of Sacred Dusk coming in from Commander, followed by Bringer of the Last Gift, followed by a Cresting Monstrosaurus coming in from Jurassic Park, and then we're going to see ourselves a Molten Collapse coming in. That is some pretty cool artwork and very secret layer if I, uh, you know, I mean, just look at that thing. It's definitely secret layer artwork. All right, moving into the second half of the box here. Still no special guest yet. Unless I skipped it, but I don't think so. All right, so we got an acrobatic leap, followed by Join the Dead. Then we're going to see ourselves a Sunfire Torch, followed by a Hidden Volcano with a Shihili's Lattice. Then we've got a Chart, of course, with a Sith Claw Raptor. Then we've got the Forest, followed by Zoya Lava Tongue coming in a showcase with a Restless Reef as our main set rare, followed by Cutzil's Flinker coming in uh, as an extended art, with First of the Blessed as a Mythic coming in from the Commander subset in Showcase. And right behind that, we're going to see ourselves the Roaming Throne. This is going to be a really good hit from the main set coming in in Borderless. And then we're going to see the Forest. I'll go ahead and flip that over for you. And then we are going to see a Bone Horde Dracosaur coming in uh, in foil uh, extended art with a map and an angel. So that's our second Bone Horde Dracosaur uh, for the box. One in foil, one in non-foil. And we're up to seven Mythics now. All right. Next up, we got an Ancestor's Aid, followed by a Pathfinding Axe Jaw, Rampaging Spike Tail, then we're going to see ourselves a Miner's Guidewing with a Colossal Dactyl. Then we're going to see Hurl into History with our Gargantuan Leech, followed by a Plains. And then we're going to see the Seething Tower in Showcase with Galta, the Stampede Tyrant, another Mythic coming in with the uh, Security Seal off a little bit there. But that's all right. That's another main set Mythic. That's three so far. And then we get a Subterranean Schooner. Followed by Promise of Alcatraz coming in from the uh, Commander subset with a Trumpeting Carnosaur. And then we're going to see ourselves a Savage Order coming in from the Jurassic World series, uh, along with a Kellen Daring Traveler and a Vampire Skeleton Pirate. And let me just move that over there. All right, four more packs to go. Who or what will be our special guest? I'm hoping for a Mana Crypt. All right, so we have the Altecan Landmark, followed by a Pirate Hat. Then we get the Cosmium Blast with a Deep Goblin Skull Taker, a Bitter Triumph, Cutzel Mamlet Exemplar with a Spelunking, good uncommon. Then we're going to see ourselves a Swamp, 
followed by a belligerent yearling. And then we've got ourselves a fabrication foundry from the main set with a deep fathom echo coming in extended art with a first of the blessed, another mythic coming in from the commander subset. And then we're going to see uh, Anim Pakal Thousand Moon coming in as a showcase rare. And then we're going to see the Jurassic Plains. Couldn't flip that for you. It's nice and calm on the other side of the plains. Then we get ourselves a Brass Tunnel Grinder with a Gnome and a Golem uh, on the uh, other side of that token. All right, this one starts off with a Brazen Blade Master. Disruptor Wonderglyph, Disturbed Slumber, followed by an Ultech Archaeologist, Market Gnome. Then we're going to see the Enterprising Scallywag with a Spring Loaded Saw Blades, followed by an Island. And then we're going to see the Great Mistake again coming in in Foil Showcase with a Terrarian's Soul Cleaver coming in as our main set rare. And then we are going to see ourselves a Dire Flail, followed by a Singer of Swift Rivers from Commander. And behind that, we're going to see Haughty Poet of Unity, another mythic coming in in Borderless. Very nice. And then we're going to see the Jurassic Island, followed by a Squirming Emergence and a Treasure Merfolk in the back. Wow, so many mythics in this box. I'm just going to kind of see if I can't spread some of them out. Still can't believe we've got two Bone Horde Dracosaurs plus a Cavern of Souls. That is awesome. And if I miss the special guest, beat me up in the comments. I'll certainly beat myself up on the uh, screen overlays. All right, so we've got ourselves a Song of Stupefiction with a Malmet Scythes, followed by a Fan Reunion. Then we're going to see a Captivating Cave, Malmet Warscribe with a Rampaging Ceratops, Pit of Offerings. Then we're going to see ourselves a Mountain, followed by a Thrashing Brontodon with the Ever-Flowing Well as our main set rare. Then we're going to see a Bedrock Tortoise with a Curious Altilosaur. And I see our special guest down there. And then we're going to see ourselves a Restless Ridgeline, followed by a Command Tower coming in from the Jurassic World. And our special guest is going to be a Foil Lord of Atlantis. This is going to be a really good hit for us. And then we're going to see a Map and a Bat. So let's go ahead and put our special guest right up top. This will be our final pack, and then we'll just do the box topper, and we'll jump right into the MTG box analysis. All right, so we're going to see an Iron Paw Aspirant with a Greedy Freebooter, Basking Capybara with a Volatile Wanderglyph. Then we're going to see a Careening Minecart, followed by a Cody Scavenger with a Sunbird Standard. And then we're going to see that Forest, followed by Captain Storm, Tashana's Tidebinder, another good rare hit there. Awesome. Put that right there. Then we're going to see Abuelo's Awakening, followed by a Sun Frill Intimid or Imitator coming in from the Commander subset with a Molten Collapse, this time non-foil, uh, borderless. And then we're going to see ourselves a Compe Swarm coming in from the Jurassic World set with a Trumpeting Carnosaur coming in as our last foil rare with a copy and a spirit. All right, so now we have this super smushed <laughs> box stopper here. So let's see if we can't uh, open this up carefully and reveal maybe a valuable card. It's kind of hit or miss with these. And we are going to see a Whispering Cloak coming in, just an uncommon as a box topper. All right, so I'll get everything sorted, organized, and be right back with the MTG box analysis. Let's get things started by reviewing the contents of the box. In today's box, we saw 108 of the 291 standard frame cards in foil from the main set. We also picked up two showcase cards in non-foil and eight in foil. We saw 10 non-foil and 10 foil borderless, as well as 12 non-foil extended art and five in foil. From the Commander subset, we saw a total of 13 cards, including our box stopper, and we also picked up one Jurassic World card for each pack, giving us a total of 12. And today's box contained one foil special guest. 
Moving into coverage in the main set, in the non-foil space, we saw 24 unique cards out of a possible 101, giving us 24% coverage. In the traditional foil space, we saw 124 unique cards out of a possible 393. This gave us 32% coverage of the set. Before getting into the value of today's collector booster box, let's take a look at the current value of the main set. This chart displays all 402 cards from the Lost Caverns of Ixalan set using non-foil market prices as of December 2nd, 2023. Currently, the set features 19 cards valued over $10, with six of those cards being valued over $20, and the Cavern of Souls holding up the top spot at $34.93 in the borderless frame. The set also contains six cards valued between $5 and $10, and 58 cards valued between $1 and $5. The other 319 cards are currently valued under $1. A full set of the 402 cards, not including the Neon Ink variants, has a current market value of $592.41, which is down about $17 from last week. Now let's recap the actual observed value that we saw in today's box for the main set. This box was hands down the best box for the main set that we've seen thus far. We ended up seeing six cards valued over $10, including the Roaming Throne, two Bone Horde Dracorosauruses, a Tashana's Tidebinder, Galta Stampede Tyrant, and the number one card in the set, the Cavern of Souls. We also picked up two cards in the $5 to $10 range and 24 cards in the $1 to $5 range. The remaining 123 cards that we saw from the main set are currently valued under a dollar. Now let's take a look at the value that's possible inside the Commander subset. Currently, there is one extended art card valued over $10, and it's the one we've been talking about all along, the Charismatic Conqueror. This has almost doubled in value in the last week to $17.94. Excluding box toppers, the subset also contains four cards valued between $5 and $10 and 18 cards in the $1 to $5 range. The other 29 cards are currently valued less than a buck. In today's box, we did not see the Charismatic Conqueror valued over $10, but we did see the Broadside Bombardiers in the $5 to $10 range. We also picked up six cards valued between $1 and $5, including our box topper, the Whisper Silk Cloak. The other six cards from the Commander subset that we saw are currently all valued under a dollar. The Jurassic World Collection currently features 25 cards valued over $10. 19 of these are going to be the extremely rare emblem cards, which have a current value range of $169.99 all the way up to $550. In addition to these lottery cards, there are six cards valued over $10, with the most valuable being the Hunting Velociraptor at $44.36 in non-foil. The subset also features nine cards valued between $5 and $10 and nine cards valued over a dollar. Currently, only two of the cards in the subset are valued less than a buck. In today's box, we saw two cards valued over $10 with the Savage Order bringing in $16.12 for the non-foil version and Permission Denied bringing in $17.83 for the foil version. We also picked up two cards in the $5 to $10 range and seven cards valued between $1 and $5. Thankfully, we only saw one basic land valued under a buck. Excluding the Neon Ink Chase cards for a moment, the Special Guest subset currently features seven cards valued over $10, and five of them are valued over $15, with the Mana Crypt currently demanding $189.22 for the non-foil, non-neon version. And speaking of those neon versions, here's a look at the current market values of these cards. Note that the multicolored Neon Ink currently does not have a market value, as very few have been sold. Now, the subset also features three cards in the $5 to $10 range and seven cards valued over a dollar. In today's box, we saw one special guest, and it was Lord of Atlantis in foil, which is valued at $24.52. So how did this box perform? Well, the market price for this box as of December 2nd is down to $227.50. The Lost Caverns of Ixalan Collector Booster Box that we opened today contained 12 packs, each with 15 cards, allowing us to see 180 cards plus tokens and a box topper. The 155 main set cards, as well as the 10 tokens that we saw, have a current market value of $244.03. The 13 cards from the Commander subset have a total market value of $28.38, and the 12 Jurassic World cards plus two tokens that we saw are valued at $64.91. And our one special guest was valued at $24.52.
Add it all up and the grand total for this box comes up to be $361.84 in card market value, which is a gain of $134.34 over the market price for the box and means that this box returned 159% of the market price in card value. Now, for those of you interested in cards value just over $2, the numbers look like this. In total, we saw 33 cards valued over two bucks in this box, and they have a current combined value of $288.32. That means that those 33 cards represent 80% of the total box value and return 27% more than the market price. Before we close out the video, let's quickly compare the three collector booster boxes opened thus far on the channel. Here's a recap of what we've seen across the three boxes. For the most part, the boxes have been very consistent. However, there are variances in the number of cards across the main set and the subsets. From a value perspective, here's how the three boxes look using the market prices from December 2nd, 2023. Today's box held the most value from the main set, but not for the Commander subset. For the Jurassic World subset, today held the most value for non-foils, but came in second place for the foils. And for the special guests, it's hard to beat box number two, which featured two special guests. Here's a look at the total market value of the three boxes. When compared to today's market price of $227.50, the three boxes all have come out ahead, with today's box being clearly the best box thus far. Now be sure to subscribe to the channel as I'll be cracking open even more Lost Caverns of Ixalan searching for one of those chase cards. Thank you so much for watching, and until next time, do something amazing. Get early access to videos, download the analysis for every box open on the channel, and personally DM me, just like these fine people. All by becoming a member of the channel through YouTube or over at mtgboxanalysis.com. You'll find links in the description. Until next time, do something amazing.